What's up everyone, welcome into Mikey's boardroom. Comment, like, subscribe, and let's talk about how you play Hoplomachus Victorum. The first thing you do when starting a new campaign is select one of the available heroes to play. Each hero plays slightly differently in the form of unique power-up cards that can be obtained throughout the course of the campaign, strengthening your character and giving them special abilities. Each hero has different starting stats, dice, tactics, and allies. We'll discuss all those. This is the Campaign Tracker. It's how you track your progress through the campaign and the progression of your hero. You can see your hero's movement speed and range, aka how many steps they can take on your turn and how far away they can attack. Your hero's health is displayed here, and underneath is your leadership. Leadership determines how many allies you can have in your camp. More on that later. The upper right corner contains your hero's dice info. The combat in this game works off of D6 rolls. There are five colors of dice, yellow, blue, green, black, and red. Yellow has a hit on two sides, blue on three sides, green four, black five, and finally red has a hit on all six sides. Throughout the campaign, your hero will be able to upgrade their dice pool for their attacks, adding die or upgrading existing die to the next color tier. This is the world map containing all the different regions in Hoplomachus Victorum. On your turn, you move the marker to one of the next available points of interest. The symbol where you place your marker determines whether you draw a bloodshed event, sporting event, or an opportunity event. Bloodshed and sporting events are combat-focused skirmishes where your abilities as an entertainer will be truly tested. Sporting events present a skirmish centered around one of three different objectives, capture the flag, king of the hill, or a spar. Let's talk about the card layout real quick. Each card contains a modifier of some sort, changing the rules of that specific skirmish. The left side of the card shows how many enemies you'll be fighting. The L stands for local unit, meaning you'll take one of the units local to whatever region you're fighting in. The helmet symbol means you'll draw units from a bag. Throughout the course of your campaign, you'll be adding local units to the bag, meaning as you play, the harder and more varied each skirmish will get. The right side of the card shows how many allies I am allowed to deploy in this skirmish. I may have seven allies in my camp, but on this particular card, I can only deploy three of those alongside my hero. I suppose this is as good a time as any to talk about our camp very quickly. Your camp is where you keep your hero, allies, and your tactics chips. Tactics chips can be played during skirmishes and will do things such as stun an enemy or heal one of your units. Enemies are also able to deploy tactics during combat as well. Sporting events are non-lethal, meaning when you lose an ally they are knocked out of the skirmish but remain in your camp for future combat. The opposite is true for bloodshed events. The card layout is the same, but any unit lost in this skirmish will be added to the bag to be drawn in future skirmishes. The third type of event is an opportunity event. These offer goals and objectives that when completed upgrade your hero through prowess cards or my favorite, special allies and tactics chips to be added to your camp. After completing an event, you will mark off the next chapter of the act you're currently on. At the end of each act, you face a boss. The bosses are the other playable heroes with unique stats and abilities. Upon completion of the fourth act, you will face a Scion, the ultimate boss. Scions all have unique abilities and special ways they play that make each one feel different and unique. It may look complicated, but it's very simple. Roll a ton of dice and the colors that hit do specific things according to the boss card. The last section of your campaign tracker is the Scion influence. When your hero needs to heal, you can skip an event and instead mark the next open space on this track. Upon marking off a skull, you'll draw a Bane chip, which will have a negative modifier on your game. Usually these are added to the bag, and when drawn, they'll add an enemy unit or some sort of modifier to make that skirmish particularly hard. Each region has a different skirmish map, with their own modifiers and ways to further add to the variety of the game. This is the map for the Parthian. On the back you can see is the map for the Vesuvians region.
Lastly, let's cover how combat works. This is the biggest part of the game, yet it's very simple. The complexities really come in with all the different unit abilities and arena rules. At its core, combat evolves around three basic steps, deploy, move, engage. There are additional phases when you play tactics chips or score for King of the Hill events, but simplified down, it's deploy, move, engage. The opponent always goes first. Deploy. The enemy deploys the top unit in their line. Move. The enemy units will move up to their movement speed according to the rules displayed on the arena card. Engage. Enemy units will attack their priority, also according to the arena card. After the opponent's turn, the player goes through those same steps and combat continues until the skirmish objective is complete. Attacks consist of rolling dice and taking one health chip out for each hit. That about covers it. There are some more things that we'll cover on our playthrough, so stick around and find out what happens to our hero on the next Dragon Balls. Okay, with all that out of the way, let's talk about our campaign we got running. I'm going to be the per per Perinthian? Parthian. The Parthian guy, the shooty shooty bowman, and... Uh, We've got his stats here. His name is the Parsnip Man because he likes parsnips. And he's going to make his parsnip pie. Uh, he's got six health. Six health chips to start out with. And he has six leadership, which means he can have six people in his camp to help him out throughout the throughout the campaign. Oh yeah, we should talk about the Nemesis also. I am playing on easy mode because, uh, like, no promises. I'm probably going to get obliterated. That's what everybody wants to see anyway, is to me get watch me get destroyed. I'm not... You know, I'm not, I'm not Russell Crowe. I, I can't do what he does. I, I mean, have you seen Les Mis? I can't do that. <laughs> I can't do that. Uh, so I'm, I'm playing on easy mode and I'm going up against the Hydra because I figure that's the one that everybody wants to see kill me. It looks really ferocious. Um, and it's probably going to kill me. It's probably going to destroy me, but that's all right. We're going to try our darndest. So let's, let's learn about the Hydra real quick. The reasons this creature is feared across the Roman world are many and one. It's slavering, regenerating heads. Slavering, slavering, regenerating heads. Though once defeated by Heracles, the Hydra still presents one of the most challenging battles of any of Pluto's scions. Great. All heroes who attempt it will have to find their own way to emulate their foe's past defeat. I can do it. I can do it. So that's the that's the Hydra. I'm gonna take him down. Oh yeah, let's let's read uh, the Parsnip Man. Let's read his snippet. Let's learn about the Parsnip Man. I think that the Hydra took his parsnips, and that's why he's on a quest because he wants to make his parsnip pie. All right, the Parsnip Man. Though he is clad in spa bed armor of the Parthian Empire, the man known only as the Parsnip Man holds no formal military rank. His tactical mastery and prowess with a bow have earned him many admirers inside and out of the Parthian military structure, but he, but he views his coterie as a means to an end. Whatever the trial, he prefers to shoulder the brunt of it alone, and also with the people in his camp, who are going to take most of the hitting. Um, yeah, so we're starting down here in the Parthian's land. We'll be jumping around. Oh, let's talk about who we're fighting. The first enemy that we're going against. The first boss at the end of the act. At the end of the act, we face a boss, and at the, the first boss we're facing is the Amazonian lady. Her. That's the one. Wonder Woman's mom. Let's go with that. And then, second, we'll face this, uh, this guy. He's built like a tank. He's got like a prong, prong scepter, so we'll call him. I got nothing. This guy is the, the oh, this is the uh, the Atlantean leader, Kraken Lance. So we'll have to face him third. And then, of course, last, we're going to go up against the boss, the Big Hydra. So let's not waste any more time. That's enough. Get to it. All right. Uh, so we're down here, and we can go two ways. We can either go to a bloodshed event, or we can go to a sporting event. So let's see what we got here. We got a bloodshed event and a sporting event. The bloodshed event, 
says that when accepted, you may sacrifice any number of units in your camp and add that number of black die to your heroes attack this combat. Pretty nice, but I don't think I really want to sacrifice any of these guys right off the start. Not yet. I, I like to save my sacrificial rituals till, till they're absolutely necessary. Um, let's see what this one is. The health of all rival units is increased by the current act and number. So I think we're going to go with that one because the act is one. Act one. And so it just increases all their health by one. So I think we can do that. So it's going to sh so looking at the card here, we're going to draw one local unit and draw one bag unit. So the local unit, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, uh, the local unit is the camel knight is the camel knight, is the camel knight. So he's gonna go first, and then we got a bag unit. Let's draw from our little nice little Becky. Boom. Oh, an attacker, okay, so we're going against a camel knight and an attacker in a sporting event. Oh, good sport. Oh wait, let me read the, let me read the little snippet on the card. <clears throat> we have no respect to offer for one so green, the challenger shouted, oh. Soon you will taste your folly. All right, I feel good. All right, so um, they all get plus one health. Oh no, the camel knight has six health. So that means he's gonna get seven health because because where did it, where did it happen? Where that where did it say that? Oh yeah, right here. All the health of all rival units is increased by the current act number. Oh no. Okay, so he has seven health. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh look, I forgot to move my little thing. Whoop. All right, so he is deployed first. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Shows us right where the, he goes in the one spot, and he goes there. He was deployed. He's got intercept, blow, and taunt. So let's specifically cover exactly what those are going to do. Oh, oh, another thing, real quick before we move on. This is a sporting event, which means that there's going to be uh, someone that we cannot kill. Someone that if they die, our hero immediately loses all but one health. So we need to have one of those. So I believe in sporting event. Let me double check this real quick. Let me double check this real quick. Let me double check this real quick. Still got it. In spar events, it has to be the first. and capture the flag, it can be either. So this is a capture, man, I forgot all about this. Whoa. Uh, this is a capture the flag event. So not only uh, do we need to do the, the tribute, we gotta put the flag out. So the flag is gonna go in spot one. Our goal is to take this flag and get back with it. The Tribune, we can have it either be the Camel Knight or the Attacker. I'm kind of feeling like maybe it should just be the Camel Knight because he's got so much health anyway that we could maybe just like survive him. He only rolls one green dice. He only hits one, so we can get rid of the Attacker who's gonna roll three die. So yeah, let's do that. So he's going to be the Tribune. So we're not gonna kill him. <clears throat> he gets deployed. Intercept blow. Oh yeah, that's where we were at. <clears throat> Let's talk about his moves. Look what I've done and done. It's a good thing stacking chips is really fun. Otherwise, I'd be angry. All right, intercept blow. Okay, so intercept blow says that when he is adjacent to an ally, if that ally takes damage, this guy you can have this guy take the damage instead. Taunt. Taunt means that, you know, as I'm thinking, realizing this, I'm thinking maybe we should not have made him the Tribune because Taunt means that if he has an ally, if there's an opponent adjacent to him, that opponent has to attack him. It can't attack anybody else. So we'll see. I'm, I'm going to roll with it because you got to roll with the punches. That's what they say in that one song. Oh, you know what? Before I deploy, man, I'm all over the place tonight. Let's talk about the map. The map has a specific special little... Uh, Thing that happens on, on each map and so on this map there's a little chariot and uh, at the end of my turn the chariot moves two spaces and if you go on the chariot the chariot you know takes you with you around the map so that's going to be there and after my turn it's going to it's, after my turn every turn is going to move so I'm going to deploy my parsnip man why not I'm just going to get it going right there with that I can't move because I'm, I'm fatigued or whatever you call it dazed I prefer fatigued um, so I can't do anything because I am fatigued, and so now it just goes to their turn, but at the end of my turn, that's right, the chariot is going to activate. All right, so at the end of my turn, this guy's gonna activate and go boom, boom, one, two. Just like that, 
now it's his turn. So first they're going to deploy and they're going to get their next deployment out. And the attacker comes onto the board. The attacker has retaliate, which means if you deal damage to the attacker and you don't kill it, it gets to deal damage back to you. So it's only got three health though. She's only, or he's only, she's only got three health. So now this guy can move and he can move one. So according to the card, let's take a look at what he, what our enemies are going to do. They're going to go for the flag holder first. There is none. They're going to go for the opponent on the chariot. There is none. Then they're going to go for the unoccupied chariot. And then they're going to go for the hero or the strongest opponent after that. So the, there is an unoccupied uh, chariot. So he's going to try and he, and he can't get to the hero. So he's going to start heading for that. So he's going to go there because he can only move one. Another thing on this map is there's these two sand sand whirlpools in the middle of the map. And only, only units that are native to the Parthian land can move into these hexes. So I can go in there. Camelite can go in there. Oh, I've done it again. This is a joy. The uh, Camelite can go in there, but the attacker cannot go in there. Another thing is as the chariot moves around, if you're in the way, it's going to push you out of the way. And if it can't push you out of the way, you get crushed and killed. So let's hope that happens. <laughs> All right, um, so he can't attack me. He's only at a range of one. So now it's my turn. Uh, so I am going to deploy. Let's see, who do I want to deploy here? I think I'm going to deploy the tactician because they've got a movement of three. So maybe I can uh, like, whoosh, whoosh, and get the flag, just like that. Uh, dazed, though, or fatigued, so they can't move. I can move here, though, So and I've... Oh, I almost was so happy. Uh, and then I, uh, I can move... So I can go one, two, just like that. And then I have my turn and this is gonna move. Boom, boom. And it's actually gonna push him to the center because he's native to this land. It's the way it is. Uh, and that's the end of my turn. So now it's their turn again. So no more to deploy, but unfortunately I am right in the middle of them too. So they're just gonna straight up attack me. So let's roll some dice. Green's going to attack first. With the green dice, greens can hit on four sides. So yeah, that's gonna hit, that's not surprising. All right, now the attacker's going to attack. The attacker's going to attack. They've got a black, a blue, and a yellow dice. So black have five sides that are a hit. Uh, blue have three and yellow have two. So this is like a guaranteed at least one hit and we'll see what the others pull up for us. So yeah, guaranteed one hit, but the other two missed. Thankfully, all right, so I still have one, two, three, four health. Still four health. Um, <clears throat> and it's my turn again. So I think I might as well, I might as well spawn another one. Why not? One, two, three, four, five health for this guy. Might as well spawn him. Oh wait, can I? Yes, I can. I can have up to three. I can have three others. So we're still good. Uh, and then I'm going to go and then I'm going to go one, two, back on the chariot. I do have an ability that's going to activate. Oh, I, oh also before I do my ability, I'm gonna move this guy too. I'm gonna to go one, two, three, just in case I'm needed. Uh, and then I do have an ability that activates Fury Aura for my, my uh, parsnip man called the Burning Rage. <laughs> Burning Rage. Uh, and so that means that I deal a, a, a damage to all adjacent enemies. So I'm going to deal one damage to each of them. Booyah. Things are looking up for this round. I think I'm going to win quite handedly. Quite handedly. Uh, and then I can attack if I want to. If I attack, it has to be him because he's got taunt. I don't really see a point in it other than the fact that I get to roll some dice. So I'm, I'm definitely going to attack because that sounds pretty nice. That sounds real nice. I get to roll two blue dice, so I'm going to roll them both, and they're both a miss. Look at that. Remember, 50% chance on each of these dice, and they both miss. That's okay. I end my turn. The chariot moves one, two, and now it's their turn. She's going to try to get to me. She can go one, two, and she can indeed get to me. So now they're both going to attack me again. So let's roll green for the Camel Knight. Go, oh, a miss. That's a beauty. That's a beauty. And now they get a black, blue, and yellow. And that's going to hit on all three. Wow, look at that. One, two, three. So I have one health left. One health. 
So really, yeah, one health. So I'm going to win on my turn, though, so it's all good. Uh, that's their turn. Now's my turn, and I can just go one, two, and as soon as I take the flag back to my zone, we win that one. So I'm down to one health, and the health carries over for the hero. Uh, it does not carry over for your allies in your camp, but I will need to heal up, which means I'm going to need to heal up. Let's go with that for now. All right, I want a sporting event. So what that means, when I win a sporting event, uh, I can either recruit a rival unit to my camp, or I can gain a tactics chip. Uh, the tactics chip, I didn't really use one this turn, but they do different things like stun enemies or uh, give you extra health in, during, the, during the skirmish. So I, I do have three already. I think I'm good. What I would really like is this camel knight in my camp because he's got six health and he can get in and take lots of the damage while I shoot, sit, sit, sit back and shoot. <laughs> do that stuff. So I'm gonna take him to my camp, camel knight, and I'll put these chips back. This chip gets added to our bag. So now there's a going right back in there. And we can put these health chips back for now. We can put this at the back of the deck. And the back of the deck. And the back of the dick. What? And that's that. So I did forget at the beginning, right after combat end, I should have marked this off. Act one, this is complete. Boom. Act 1, the first part of Act 1 is done. We're down here. So, next we'll move on from here, and we do have to make our way, start making our way somewhat over towards the Amazonians, which is up here. So we'll probably go around this way, through Kunlun, and, um, and then into the Amazonians to finish up the act. That will continue on the next video. So that is how you play Hoplomachus Victorum, and that's the first sort of skirmish, kind of how the game works. So... We're going to dive more into it in the next video, and I'll put up, this will be a series until we complete this campaign, or die trying. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, check out the next one. Go out there, show kindness, and I will see you later.